Let's jump into this, shall we? Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home, and Spider-Man No Way Home. Three wonderful Spider-Man movies, all directed by John Watts. John Watts, who, by the way, is doing that new Star Wars show, um, uh, Skeleton Crew. Yes. He's doing that new. So, like, if you like those Spider-Man movies, get excited for Skeleton Crew. I think it looks great. I can't wait to see it. And the fact that John Watts is doing it is wonderful. But there's been a lot of talk. Where is Spider-Man 4? Where is our fourth Tom Holland Spider-Man movie? We're looking for it. We're waiting for it. There have been a lot of fake bullshit stories that have come and gone over the past two years or so. Like, Sony and Marvel are having big disagreements. <laughs> and Toby or uh, uh, Tom Holland is holding up this. And, oh, this is happening here. Oh, no, they're going to start shooting at the end of 2022. And all this kind of stuff that has all come to nothing. Well, now there's a report going around today that Spider-Man 4 is going to start shooting in 2025 and will be released somewhere in between Doomsday and Secret Wars. Hmm. That that's what they're aiming for. Now, I need to point out something pretty important. This is, again, like a lot of those other nothing stories that came to nothing. This is not coming from any official source. This is coming from Daniel RPK, who is a (coughs) online Twitter sort of scooper that more often than not is correct, but for me, incorrect enough times that I don't take it too deadly seriously. Again, I'm not trying to disparage it by any stretch of the imagination. Like I said, I think he's right more often than not. And the very fact that we're bringing it up on the show is a testament that I think that if he's saying this is happening, it's worth at least discussing. Because like I said, he's right more often than not. But like the all the other rumors we've had in the last couple of years, do not take this to the bank because just recently we've t- had to talk about a couple of times that he's been wrong. So with that giant disclaimer, let's talk about why this could be interesting. If they are targeting this thing to start shooting 2025 and come out in between Doomsday and Secret Wars, that's significant, not just because it gives us a window of a release date, but it also really colors what this movie could possibly be about. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing, you put this movie out prior to Doomsday, then Spider-Man 4 can be about whatever it wants. You put this movie out after Secret Wars, you know, and where the whole multiverse saga thing is brought to a conclusion and closed off and all that kind of stuff, you put this thing out before Doomsday, it can be about whatever it wants. You put it out after Secret Wars, it can be about whatever it wants. But you put this movie in between Doomsday and Secret Wars, you suddenly have a very now narrow tube of possibilities I almost did this, and I realized that yeah. that's not a good imagery. <laughs> you know, you suddenly have a more narrow hallway yes. of where your narrative can be. Because like all of us, maybe not all of us, the vast majority of us fans believe that the events of Doomsday are going to directly lead us into the events of Secret Wars. Not only for those of you who have read the comic stories, but just it seems to make sense. That's kind of what, you know, Infinity War led us directly into the events, granted five years later, but they were the causality of the events of Endgame. So if that's the case, then what a lot of us as fans are speculating is that Doomsday is going to have pretty big repercussions. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Game time. My wife Ann and I love going to events, whether they're comedy shows, concerts, an LA Lakers game. I mean, just the other night we went to go see Ronnie Chang and it was awesome. We love having these new experiences and new memories. And our sponsor Game Time makes getting tickets for concerts and events faster and easier, even if you don't buy tickets right away. Because prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer you get to the show start time. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game 
time takes the guesswork out of buying event tickets. I couldn't believe how easy and most importantly, intuitively, the entire app works. Finding the event I was looking for couldn't have been easier. The way it lays out the map of the venue, letting you know exactly where the seats are that you're looking for and how easy the process was to choose and buy those tickets. So don't worry if you think you're too late to get tickets to that big event you and your friend want to go to. They have last minute deals. Save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, whatever. So guys, take the guesswork out of buying concert tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code CAMPIA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CAMPIA, C-A-M-P-E-A, -E for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. It's going to probably change the world that the MCU inhabits. And if Spider-Man 4 is taking place in that time frame, I don't know how you do it without it being directly connected to the events of Doomsday. Which makes me wonder, because I totally believe Tom Holland will be in Avengers Doomsday. It makes me wonder if they're not actually going to play on that card of the emotional distress that Peter is going to feel looking at the face of a man that he held as a father figure, but is now the face of the world's greatest threat. Mm -hmm. And then that could lead us into the events of Spider-Man 4. And whatever the conclusion of Avengers Doomsday is and all that kind of stuff. So if this report is true, and guys, again, I have to emphasize, you have to take it with a grain of salt. It may very well not be, but for the sake of the discussion... If this report is true and they're going to aim to have Spider-Man come out in between those two films, Jonathan, then I don't see a way that Spider-Man 4 is not directly connective tissue between the two and also a byproduct of the events of Doomsday. I, I, I don't know. Do you think this, that's how people are going to look at it? This or what do seems think? like that's what it's leading to and that's what most people, and they would have to be pretty naive to, to think that audiences aren't going to connect the dots. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, we connect dots that aren't even there half the time. Um, <laughs> but it, they could, okay, they could pull an Ant Man and the Wasp where yep. literally nothing about the film connects to uh, uh, Infinity War. Other it literally than, takes place in a different time. Yeah. Right. Other Which is than, unusual for Marvel. Marvel doesn't usually tell their movies out of sequential order, right. they've done it a couple of times. So maybe they say Spider Man 4 even though it's coming out after Doomsday, maybe they say the events of Spider-Man 4 takes place just before the events right. of Right, and I could see audiences feeling like a little bit of letdown, but maybe even a little relief, and then they just connect like a after credit, a mid credit scene to Doomsday, mm. right? And then, and then like, because where we left off with uh, the second Spider-Man and then where he shows up again in Infinity War, he's just on a bus and the aliens arrive and he gets the spider tingles and he's in the action. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so I could see he gets that the tingles. I, you know, I could see that as a possibility, but they also are leading the audiences by doing this by saying, "No, this is uh, this is connected." You know. Yeah. Again, I think this just again proves what an absolute genius idea it was to bring back Robert Downey Jr. to play Doom. It opens up so many cool storytelling opportunities that just wouldn't be there if you just made him an unrecognizable face. Again, remember, Doom is going to be Doom. Doom is going to be Victor Von Doom. Right. It's it's just that the fact that he, again, he's not necessarily a variant of Tony Stark. Tony Stark may be a variant of Victor Von Doom. I mean, it's like, again, there's just so many rich storytelling possibilities here that it's just, I believe more and more that we look at it, it is an absolute stroke of genius to have him come back. And especially when you consider the impact this is gonna have on Tom Holland's Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. I think this is gonna be great. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this report going around that Spider-Man 4 is gonna come out somewhere in between Doomsday and Secret Wars? Maybe it will, maybe it won't. If it does, does it kind of become connective tissue between the two? Is it a direct repercussion of the events of Doomsday? Or do they pull like what Jonathan was saying, an Ant-Man and the Wasp, where that, yeah, the movie comes out in between Doomsday and Secret Wars, but they're going to say it takes place before the events of Doomsday. Whatever you guys think about it, jump down into the comment section below and let us know your 
thoughts.